everyone, and welcome to So Please Understand. I'm the host, Holly Noon, and today's episode is probably going to be one of my favorites because we are talking about Marvel, Disney, representation, diversity, and I have some great guests with me today. I have TJ Legacy. He is a journalist, activist, political organizer, and the host of the Soapbox podcast. And then I have Dr. Nikki Sloan, educator, leader, my soar, and yes, I'm excited. So, TJ, if you want to introduce yourself to my audience, mm -hmm. I would appreciate it. Hey, what's going on, family? Uh, my name is TJ Legacy. Yes, host of the Soapbox Podcast. I, I started off by being a grassroots organizer throughout the state of Florida and nationwide on social political issues. And then I recently transitioned about two years ago into the media journalism space where I'm a media personality. And I also um, give seminars and talk, uh, you know, and teach about youth, about domestic violence awareness. Um, also teach about empowerment in your communities and representing marginalized communities so that they can um, really stay politically, socially politically engaged. So uh, we have a show every Thursday on YouTube and Facebook on Facebook Live. And I'm just happy to be here in Marvel and, and the Marvel series and Disney is something that is right up my alley. So I'm glad that uh, to be invited on the show and talk about these topics. Okay. And Dr. Nikki, please introduce Hi. yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Nikki Sloan. Um, I am an educator, lifelong educator, actually. I work in administration at a local high school and uh, I'm a mom with two beautiful, no longer kids. However, I have young adults now. <laughs> Um, the beautiful young adults. I am also a minister's wife and minister myself. Um, I'm very much an advocate for students and our people, uh, for our community. And uh, I love working in my community and doing everything I can to keep us on top where we belong. Yes, thank you, Nikki. So the first question, and I'm going to pose it to Nikki. Uh, how long have you been a fan of Marvel, Disney? I'm just going to be like the whole, you know, uh, <laughs> uni like superhero animated universe that it is. And like, who's your favorite character, your movie show? You know, I'd like to hear how long you've been a fan. Okay. So I have been a Disney fan and Marvel fan pretty much all of my life. I'm probably going to date myself right now, but was even a fan or must I say a junkie when they were still just comic books <laughs> so I love Marvel um and in my mind there was always a battle between which universe is better Marvel or DC um ultimately mm -hmm. it has always been and remains Marvel um Disney I, I think I got most into Disney when my sister had children and I had nieces and I was like mom number two for them. So I made it a point to watch every Disney movie with them. Every time one came out, we purchased it. I still have all of them on VHS. Um, so yeah, people still clamor for those and they're not getting them, but they're great. Um, we have watched just about every Disney movie there is out there. And I think I have most of them in our collection on VHS. Yeah. And then now for my... <laughs> all of the the entire com you know the combination everything on dvd so uh as far as my favorite definitely marvel trumps disney all day long but now that they're together it's the marriage of the two um best worlds i guess coming together uh in regards to characters i tend to like some of the villains <laughs> i like i Hold like their development <laughs> <laughs> I like their development and backstories um, to just see how it so closely relates to real life and how things that happen in childhood can really be the rudder to your ship of life. So I like the villains. I do like the heroines and the heroes. Um, but if I were to say what was my absolute favorite, it would be all things Avengers. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, PJ, what about you? Well, I started off as a Disney fan because as when you're growing up, like the Disney uh, VHS, you know, that was family night for us, you know, in our household. 
you know, whether it's the, you know, the Lion King, Beauty of the Beast, uh, Aladdin, Return of Jafar, which is a sleeper. I don't think people give Return of Jafar <laughs> enough credit. I just want to put that on wax so it's official because it's not official if you don't say it on <laughs> social media. But um, yeah, it's just watching a lot of the a lot of the Disney movies. But then as I got older, uh, you know, you don't really do the fairy tale. You know, as a young as a young man, you don't really do the fairy tale. So I really got into the Marvel uh, characters when Fox had the animated series of the X Men and Spider Man, those TV shows. So I'm a huge wrestling fan as well. So after wrestling, is Saturday morning used to be wrestling and then watching. X Men and the um, and Spider Man series, which are still on streaming service now, they actually put them on on all the streaming services. So I was huge, really into that. Um, that's what was really introduced me to the comic, uh, to the characters. And then my older brother was into the comic books, and so I was like, okay. So now I got into more of the backstory and the minutia of the character and the origin of the characters. Uh, but my then it was my favorite, my favorite character. Uh, I would say growing up, it was Beast of the X-Men because he was like, you know, I was always a big chubby kid. So it was like uh, he was smart and he was athletic. So I was like, oh, OK, I could I could. It's about being being able to identify with what you see on screen. And then I also uh, I love the I love Wolverine. And now now present day, I'm a huge Thor. And of course, Black Panther uh, T'Challa fan, as you guys can see. But now I collect the comic books and uh yeah, it's kind of like a way of a way of a uh, little bit of nostalgia, but also it's it's good to uh, see the adaptations on screen and and, um, and on film. Oh, that's great. Um, so for me, um, being a young girl, I was Disney princess all the way. So I loved all the Disney movies. I think I was Pocahontas like three years in a row for Halloween when I was younger because she was like the brownest one at the time. <laughs> you talk about yep. representation. She was like, yep. she was like mm, brown. I was like size. You're like, mm, like brown. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Jasmine, Pocahontas. So I was yeah. like the Disney princess. Those are the only ones that I watched. Um, except for like Lion King got thrown in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted to be saved by a prince. That's just what they <laughs> sold me back, <laughs> back mm -hmm. then. Um, but now I would probably say like my favorite characters of like the Marvel would have to be, um, I like some of the guardians. I like the guardians of the galaxy. I think they're all kind of just all have issues with like parents, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, their family members, <laughs> and they come together yeah. uh, and find that camaraderie. But I like it because when they need to come together, it's like I always get like teary eyed and like either Guardians of the Galaxy when they come together because it's mm -hmm. just like the misfits find each other and they're like yeah. family. So I, that's probably my favorite. That's why I have like an I am Groot shirt, even though I'm like short, you can't see it. I have an I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is on brand because Groot is short, so it's on brand. There you yeah. go. <laughs> there there you go. Baby Groot. That's yeah. baby Groot. Yeah, there baby Groot. Baby Groot. <laughs> baby Groot. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, over the past 10 years, we'll probably say starting with Iron Man, so maybe a little more than 10, 10 or so years, we've probably noticed, you know, Marvel's become very big on representation. Um, and Disney too, but just their movies have kind of changed when they've redone um, the animated movies and done live. Um, so TJ, what have you noticed in terms of that change? Well, I've noticed with Disney that they're they're trying to not rewrite history, but be accountable to their own self because Disney's empire was actually built on a lot of racial undertones and, yep. and their cartoons and their imagery. So now, you know, you're seeing on the Disney Plus on the streaming services, some of the um, some of the cartoons and some of the movies have um, disclaimers on them about you know the historic context of where where they were at the time. I know specifically in the adaptation of Peter Pan, the animated uh, movie of Peter Pan, and the depiction of Native Native Americans and how offensive that how offensive yeah. that can be. And now present day, we're seeing more traditionally or historically white roles, you would say, are now being replaced with people who are more ethnic, right? So most recently, I watched Cru uh, Cruella, uh, the, mm -hmm. the Disney movie that's on there. And so Roger and uh, Anita, who were white in the, um, in the um, in the animated in the animated version are actually played by two ethnic people, an Indian man and a, and a black, an actual a black woman. So we're seeing a lot of um, 
you know, not replacing white folks, but it's giving opportunity to people who in, in the past didn't have those opportunities because Disney had all white cast. And so now we're seeing more, uh, especially with the adaptation of, of Black Panther, we're seeing how layer black people or black characters can be in that it's a, there's a market for it because it, so now they see that uh, with the success of these movies that, you know, minorities, black folks, um, they're, you know, we have a big, there's a big consumer base. So they're, they're tailoring their content to not only black folks, but then they're also going into sexual orientation as well and giving a representation to those people. So to uh, that, that community as well. Okay, Nikki, your thoughts? Um, you are so right, extremely accurate when you talk about Disney's origin and being a native Floridian, seeing it start and uh, develop the way it has mm -hmm. with Disney World. Um, you're right, everything had a slant, even some anti-Semitism was in there and there mm -hmm. were a lot of uh, things that were very disparaging, but if you were not a, a knowledgeable eye, you didn't even notice a lot of it because mm -hmm. it was the time. Uh, I do applaud Disney for finally coming out and um, diversifying their characters and their casting, especially as they transition from the animated live action shows uh, and even onto the big screen for regular movies. What I have to do, what I do have to say is Disney still falls into the Hollywood trap where there's only one. Uh, when you find a cast, if there's going to be a person of color on there, there will only be one. Unless it's a show that has a predominant cast centered around a minority family, mm -hmm. you can find the one. You're going to get the, I hate near I say it, token black, uh, but you're always going to find that. And um, I like that they are transitioning from that. They still uh, have a long way to go, in my opinion, uh, regarding how they're doing casting. And that's just because I'm in the world of theater as well, and I know what's out there. And the capabilities that they have of diversifying even more is available to them. So I would love to see Disney and Marvel come out and completely uh, diversify on a total level rather than pertaining to the storyline or the character's original origin. I mean, if we can come out and um, have movies where Indians are played by white people, then surely we can have some of these princesses and kings and good people, not just the kings, played by people of color as well. So they can yeah. definitely reach out and get a little bit more if you ask me. Yeah. 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 And I will say this, I will applaud Disney too in terms of when it comes to the princesses and how how all the stories now don't end with them like marrying a prince or falling in love. It's almost just them finding themselves and that empowerment and like your truth and who you are. And I think that's like, I think that's a good message to send that it's not to say you can't be in love. I mean, that's, you know, it's a part of life, but I think it's also important like how Moana and Elsa from Frozen and just like Araya and all these Disney princesses, even Mulan now, it's like, they changed it up a little bit where these women are more outspoken and empowered and leaders. And it was like, you know, particularly, um, I took that away from Mulan where it was like in the previous, she was like, she married the guy. And, but now it's like, she's like a general mm. in, in, in the army. And it's like, what, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just thought that <laughs> those changes are refreshing to see. Um, as just even in our, in just outside of like entertainment, you see barriers being broken down by women in the military and then other areas as well. So I think that's cool that Disney's starting <laughs> to in yeah. infuse that into their movies. Well, you also see yeah. that, you also see that in um, the new, the live action uh, movie mm -hmm. of Aladdin and, and yes. how they put the twist mm -hmm. with, with Princess Jasmine, how she was like, well, hey, yep. I can, I, let's, let's change it up. And I think, you know, in the modern day, uh, with the Me Too movement and 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 women women empowerment and the new surge of women empowerment, you're starting to see that not in movies and TV shows. Like if we look at shows, you you mentioned it before about you know the Disney princesses and being saved by a prince. This idea that you that a woman needs to be saved, or even you know uh, Sleeping Beauty. You know, there are people who have had some problems with like, hey, she didn't give consent for that kiss, but he's over there kissing her to wake her up. 
right? And then we look at mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the essence of what Little Mermaid was about. It's a woman mm-hmm. basically willing to give up her own identity in order to fall in love, which is a problematic message in today's mm-hmm. time as well. So um, not just when it comes to race or sexual orientation is Disney trying to clean up their stuff, but also dealing with uh, the issues of sexism. They're trying to make sure that they right a lot of wrongs because they know that um, they have a responsibility to their consumer base, which are young women um, who are growing up seeing and viewing these movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What positive do you see by having more representation in film and TV? Mm-hmm. And I feel like since Marvel and Disney is such a big player in this game, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, what positives? So Nikki, what positives do you see if they were to kind of, like you said, have more representation and diversity? Inclusion is everything. Um, being able as children to see yourself somewhere else bigger than where you are is huge. Uh, a lot of kids can dream big, but actually seeing it makes it possible for them. Um, when they get to see themselves on TV or people like themselves on TV, whether it's people with special needs, whether it's people of different races, whether it's different sexual orientations, whatever it is, when they can see it, it pulls to them that they have an opportunity to get there themselves um, and that the, there is no limit. Wherein before it seemed, you know, if I wanted to be a princess, I needed to be, you know, fair skin with blonde hair. And that wasn't going to happen for me, you know, and it wasn't going to happen for most kids because a lot of kids weren't fair with blonde hair. So when they started differentiating, I mean, it freaked me out when I saw Snow White with black hair. I was like, oh, she's got black hair, but she's still white. And so as kids, it's great to be able to see what they want to emulate. It's good for them to know that all of the things that they see on TV are bona fide aspirations that are attainable. Uh, So even if it's just uh, a fantasy world of wanting to be a princess, I mean, you look at um, uh, Meghan Markle, who knows what she saw as a child? And look at her now. She's a princess is a princess, duchess, mm-hmm. whatever they want to call her at this point, whatever title she's allowed to have, whatever. But she <laughs> became that. And who knows? Maybe she was a young kid one day looking at those same cartoons, dreaming about being a princess. And lo and behold, her life has unfolded in such a magical way. So I think the importance mm-hmm. of kids being able to see it empowers them. It empowers them to be safe in the decisions they're making for themselves and be confident that that is something that they can attain. Yeah. TJ, what are your thoughts? Well, I think over the past 10 years, and it's so, it's so fitting that you brought up Meghan Markle because, you know, she actually gave birth uh, at, at this time of this recording um, yeah. to Lily, <laughs> Lily, Lily Beth <laughs> Diana, which is, you know, the, with, you know, her husband's late mother. Yeah. Um, but when you look at, when you look at the, uh, the growth, it's, you know, I always talk about the illusion of inclusion, right? And so the illusion of it was mm-hmm. that, oh, we could just put that one black character, as you mm-hmm. alluded to, the token, and oh, well, that's that's progress. Well, we gave you what you want. But inclusion mm-hmm. is actually equal- equality across the board. So me, I think the growth with Disney and Marvel is not happening on screen, but really off screen because of movies like Black Panther, because of a more predominantly African-American roles and cast, it's opening the doors for more ex- Black executive producers, Black black directors and Ryan, and Ryan Coogler. We're seeing more uh, sh- you know, showrunners, production assistants. I think it was Anthony Mackie who brought that uh, to Marvel's attention where he said, um, where he brought his attention to that on Black Panther, you had uh, almost an all Black crew uh, when it comes to the executive producers, directors, showrunners, and everything. But then when it came to like Infinity Wars or some of the ensemble movies, it was predominantly white again. And it's like, wait a minute, are they, if they, if black people are good enough and qualified to be the showrunners, not just for a black film, let's make sure that we have it, you know, across the board. And so you're seeing more of uh, opportunity being given to people, uh, black people and, and other minorities um, in some of these Disney Plus, Disney Plus Marvel series as well. So I think when we talk about inclusion, when we talk about, uh, I always want to make sure that it's not us getting a job or getting a title. It's, it's, it's actual ownership of what, we're, of what we're doing. And we still got a far way to go because you know, Black Panther, we got a billion dollars. We made that movie a billion dollars, but mm-hmm. we've got to make sure that we're, hopefully that is the next step for years to come when we do 
for future, you do future episodes, we'll talk about ownership of, of these uh, movies and you'll have someone who's not just a black face, but someone who actually identifies with black culture because there is a, there is a distinct difference. Okay. So this question I'm going to throw out there because we were talking about Anthony Mackie. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about there being a black Captain America now? And like what that means? Um, Nikki, your thoughts? <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm team whatever they want to do to make it right. <laughs> <laughs> it again shows that there can be an African-American who is the hero of America. Imagine that. Um, so yeah, I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Captain America and um, uh, Evan. Uh, I forget the first name, but either way. Chris, I, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. However, yeah. you know, he did the role. He coined the role. It was awesome. It's amazing. I will always watch it, but I'm eager to see Anthony Mackie get in there, put on that costume, wield that shield, and show me that, yes, a black man can be a strong Captain America as well. America's not. Mm -hmm. So why not have a hero that's as diverse as we are? I'm all for it. Very true. TJ, what are you yeah, right, this gonna, what this do you is going to sound really contradictory, but I'm going to need Don't do it. Hit, Don't I'm do gonna it. Need for, look, he can be Captain America all he want, but Captain America, he didn't take that, that serum, okay? So he needed to take at least a shot glass of the serum because he was getting beat up by that little girl in that series for a good little That's while. He getting beat up by those soldiers. Like, I'm going to need you to put your pride aside and take, some, take a shot glass of that serum so you can actually be Captain America which is the, <laughs> the essence of the character. Now, you could wear the suit, but you still ain't got the powers. So, you know, he don't have the protection of the reflexes like the original Captain America mm -hmm. did. Now, I was more of, when I was watching the series of uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I was on the side of Isaiah Bradley, who was the original uh, first person who, you know, mm -hmm. and that was the, uh, a call to the Tuskegee experiments where, you know, the you know, testing uh, black people, but he took the serum and what they did to him and all the testing and, and stuff, but he took the serum. So mm -hmm. we can't have old Isaiah Bradley stronger than the actual new black, <laughs> black uh, the Captain America. So I'm gonna need for him to at least, you know, get over that before I <laughs> settle in. Because right now he just got a suit. They didn't give him everything they needed to get. They didn't give him wings. They didn't give him a Wakanda vibranium suit. They didn't give him a shield, but he ain't got no powers. He's just so, a regular, regular black. It's me. It's like me putting on that suit. I'm okay, so against people with those superpowers. So now I'm going to take off my rational hat <laughs> and put on my conspiracy theory. So why do you think they won't give him the serum? Hey, listen, look. Don't let me <laughs> let my incense. Okay. Just not get like look, look. So we, we, I'm we, just you saying. Know, but like you know, you can't be can't be prideful, you know, right? And it's like it's almost like because he's black, he's already superhuman. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But we don't. We don't need the. He don't need the. We want him strong, but we don't want him too strong. We, you know, we just, you know. Yeah. Just but, uh, yeah. But I think even even Black Panther took you know the heart shaped herb to get right. some of, to bring, you know illuminate some of the powers that he has to get the strength of the Black Panther. So you know you just walk around with a lot of equipment and and, and no <laughs> powers. That ain't really a superhero to me. You just that's literally he's like Black Batman. Because Black Batman ain't got no powers. <laughs> So, you know, so that's where I'm at with, with, uh, with the new uh, Captain. But shout out to Anthony Mackie for his role. But that's right. uh, you know, I'm going to yeah. need for him to, you know. Take a shot. To, you know, yeah, take, take, just take a shot like a little thimble, right? Just put on your gums or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bucky, will, Bucky will have to hold him down with his super strong arm and then just like force him to drink it. They'll just go Look to Wakanda it. together and <laughs> Yeah, and every and every yeah, and Bucky and, and Bucky giving I wasn't cool with that. Bucky, every time Bucky see a sister in a movie, whether it's Siri or whether it's Anthony Mackie's uh Falcon's uh his <laughs> sister, he got Goo Goo Gaga eyes, you know, so he, yeah, he got a little fever. So I'm gonna need uh, see that's why he gotta have the serum because he can't check when a soldier if it was trying to move up on his sister, what he gonna do? He ain't gonna do exactly. nothing. Exactly. So that's hilarious. Bucky was in Wakanda for a while. Yeah, he was in Wakanda for a while. He was in Wakanda for a while. Wakanda was getting in him. 
All of a sudden, the air, the, air, the air moves, and he's like, oh, that's the Dora Milaje. Like, how you have to make sense for where black sisters are all of a sudden? That's what we do. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. We just got to watch that. We got to watch that. You gotta watch that. You know? They also have to keep that down. You know, they, they we know the power we have. They yeah, do, exactly. It feels like they have to suppress that. Like, they, if we give him that last dose, mm-hmm. gonna, like, take him to an iconic level. But hey, let's, don't let's, be afraid. Take it where the money's going to follow. Listen, I took over a uh, hundred, uh, probably over 400 uh, uh, single mothers and black youth to see Black Panther for the first time in a movie theater. We rented out the movie theater. Uh-huh. And like two wow. things when I saw Black Panther and like you're seeing that movie when Michael B. Jordan takes off his shirt to fight the child for the first time. I've never felt so alone in a movie theater ever <laughs> in my life. Like I was just like all you hear in a whooping in the hall. It was very inappropriate. And then, <laughs> during the end credits, during the end credits, I'm watching and then like the way he was talking to Siri and like looking in her eyes. I was like, is this did I just send all these si- young sisters to this movie and this white man about to. Kiss this black prince, princess, like my heart was palpitating. I was like, oh Lord, what, what am I what am I what am I contributing to? So. <laughs> um so what do you okay, so you go yeah. to the next question. This is it's probably like, what do you think that Disney Marvel can do to improve in terms of represent representation and diversity? I mean we touched on it, but what do you think they can do to improve um on it? Let's say TJ, you go first. <laughs> um, I would say one, like, there's one thing that sticks out to me, and I would not just say it's Disney, but I would think more so in space. Like, every time there's, like, a okay. black character in space, they always turn them green. Like, they're, they're like, the more is green. Like, you see this in, in Star Trek. Martian all, Man, like, green. Martian Man, yeah, yeah. Like, I would like to see more, like, let's more futuristic. Like, we are, like, black folks are in the future, too, right? And even John Boyega, when yeah. he talked about um, Star Wars, he, you know, when he was uh, Finn, he was saying, like, look, I was, we were promoted, like, I was going to have a bigger role. But in the movie, I had, it was like a subplot, right, where they kind of rewrote some things. Even George Lucas wasn't that... Mm. Um, uh, happy about you know some of the character adaptations in those movies. So I would say moving forward, you know that we continue. I know with the passing of Chadwick Boseman that we continue not just on screen but like I said off screen as well. But when we start diving into like the future and some of the Eternals and stuff and some of the movies that are coming in Phase Three, um, we need to start seeing more of us in space. You know, like we don't have that negative connotation. I could put on a space helmet. And we're gonna we're gonna be all right in the future. So I would like to see I would like to see yeah. more of that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think about hidden figures. Like we help people get to space. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah. Look, look, it, it's, oh, and ain't that like white folks? They anytime we show up, they just trying to leave. Like you gentrify our area, but when we show up, all of a sudden it's time it's time to move. So y'all just gonna move to space and leave us on <laughs> leave us on Earth? No, we fought, we go into. You know, we, we may have rock late, but we coming to space, too, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nikki, what are your thoughts? What do you think Disney Marvel could do better? <laughs> I would agree with that. As they move forward, um, yeah. RIP Avengers, I don't know how I'm going to get over that. But when they come mm. with the Eternals and what they're going to do with the Eternals, they just need to bring it because mm. we need to be there. We need to be primary characters there. We need mm. We don't need to fade away just because, you know, like you said, Chadwick Boseman has passed away, our first um, Black hero, hero, and um, he's gone. But I want to see them reprise that role with someone of color as well, which they can't help but do that. Same. Even be a woman. I believe they're trying to work on Siri becoming um, the Black guy. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Um but like you said, when we go out in space, we're there too. I mean, <laughs> we change planets doesn't mean we have to start all over again with fighting equity and, you know, inclusion. So I think they need to make sure that they don't forget that. First of all, I hope they don't ever forget how much Black Panther brought to their pockets. Because I think that's the one thing that speaks most to them is the revenue that they get from these movies. And I'm sorry, but it was not uh, our counterparts that made Black Panther such a success. It was us. And if you if you move forward and leave us out, you're not going to get those same revenues. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that same support. 
And in fact, if you go too far to the left, you're going to miss us out all together and you're really going to be feeling it because if we don't support it, whether they like it or not, if we don't support it, they'll get, they'll have a level of success. They'll never have Black Panther level of success again if they don't include us. So they have to move forward with us being present, being leads, being there, being wherever they're deciding to take this next venture. Mm -hmm. We got to be there. And Marvel Studios yeah. needs to realize that without black folks or black lead, they would never, there would be no Marvel Studios because Marvel was about to go out of business, but Blade, Wesley Snipes was the real, yep. they, they oh saved, boy, that's right. Oh yeah, save, Mar save Marvel. <laughs> so I agree that, you know, they owe us more than representation. I will say, cause I know they're going, they're going more the route of the um, LGBTQ uh, community and giving more representation to them, which is, which is fine. I would just prefer for that it would, it, not be all you know all in one right like you can have mm -hmm. lgbtq community uh representation but it, it always seems in movies and film that when you ever have a black lgbt uh person that all of a sudden their blackness is omitted and they're just an lgbtq rep representative so it's okay you can have a black yeah. character who's who's black and then you could also have lgbtq like there's room for for multiple rather than just saying look let's just make uh, his black asian um lgbtq and just put everybody into into just one so mm -hmm. i would like to see across the board uh representation yeah okay okay so this is my next question and i, I and i'll say my answer first but mm -hmm. so my next question is what would you want to see Disney do more of? And I know we just talked about it, but the one thing I, why I bring this up is because, you know, they have like Disney princess movies. Why don't they have Disney prince movies? And I'm not even talking like, I always wonder like, why can't they tell the story of like a young boy finding himself and what he does to become a king or rule over people or make a community better? I always wondered like, are, do they just based on maybe like surveys and responses? We don't want to watch boys. Like take like role, they just automatically in Disney movies they're already going to be king because their dad said so. Now they got to go save the princess. But I always wondered like Aladdin is kind of along that line because you see Aladdin's journey in a way, but it still parallels Jasmine. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm always wondering why can't a boy just be like the, it's the movies about them? I don't know. I just that was just my I just crossed my mind sometimes. Like outside of being a superhero, like why can't he be a prince or like just I don't know. I always wondered. Like why he does like a man doesn't like kind of just lead the movie where we have Moana and Elsa and um, Araya. Those are the more recent ones. But, you know, Belle, Ariel, they all are kind of like the movies about really them. But what about stories about men and their struggles and their things that they have to go to? Yeah. I don't know. I was just wondering what your all thoughts on being the, that type of representation. I think Disney just sticks with the stereotype. Um, girls are princesses and, and boys are heroes. Uh, boys play with toys, girls play with dolls. I think they're so stuck in this, you know, the traditional roles that they just maybe haven't even thought about that, you know, and the closest they got to it was Lion King and it was animated. I'm like, really? Okay. So, you know, a boy can be, you know, they can show that. And maybe it is, like you said, they do the, the query in and find out that it's just not something people want to watch. Um, but it's also not a whole lot of that happening in our world either. You know, it's always, it seems like um, the men, boys grow up to be men that are um, prone or entitled or required to take a certain station in life where women tend to have to fight and wait for someone to choose them. So it's, you know, like, like they said in the movie, all my life I've had to fight. As mm -hmm. a woman, you always feel like you have a journey and there's probably more life and more richness in the story of a woman's uh, ascension than there was in a guy. But I'm sure they could do that and it would help our boys. But if we really think about it, they're doing what we do. We, you know, our boys, we, we bring them here and that's what we do. We throw the trucks at them. We throw the construction at them. We, you know, they're, they're builders, they're makers, they're creators, they're doing all of that. And we don't ever really focus on the soft side of a boy or the ability of a boy to be sensitive. We don't focus on stuff like that. We also have that mindset that boys are rugged, you know, 
boys are made with, you know, snails and all those puppy dog tails while girls are sugar and spice and all things. So I think it's because of those traditional roles that Disney hasn't veered away. I mean, they took this long just to veer into the racial differentiation. I would imagine to change into the gender, uh, to, to flip the roles a little bit on how they tell those stories would probably take them a little while longer because they're very slow to move. They, they find a niche, they get there, they work it, they milk it for all they can get out of it. And then they begin to progress as society progresses. So since society hasn't really started telling that story and making it such a beautiful thing or, you know, making it such a blockbuster, you know, it's, it just hasn't happened with Disney yet. Mm -hmm. DJ. Well, I don't know. I know this is not the soapbox. I don't know how woke you wanted me to, how woke you wanted me to be. <laughs> but I will, I'll be honest and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll dial it to a seven more so than a 10. Um, I think, okay. I think it, it has to do with a lack of empathy, especially when you're talking about young black boys. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. It's hard for uh, the dominant, the dominant white society to empathize with a young black boy and his struggles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the closest thing you have to that is someone like Mowgli. Right. And that's one of the why, oh, yeah. one of the reasons why Jungle Book is probably one of my one of my favorite Disney movies, um, because you see someone who's grows up to a boy and like see go through stages of life, really, as metaphorically speaking, and, and how they're trying to find their identity and how someone is actually lost and how impressionable young boys can actually be if they don't have any guidance. Right. So that's probably one of the closest things that we've we've actually seen. But when we're looking at the pecking order of uh, white supremacy and then a lot of these institutions are still we talked about the racial history of disney a lot of the yeah. institutions are white are are issues and institutions of white supremacy and you don't want to empower black boys because if you empower black boys to be mm. to know that they're worth and they're and that they're kings and then those kings are going to want to you know treat their women like queens and then you have the adaptation yeah. of the black family the system is designed to separate the black family in order to divide and conquer whether it's because of gender issues or race or whatever, or even class or sexism, um, then by design, you're, you're, you're throwing in a chink in the system. And that's really not what people want, because um, I think it's, it's I think it would be more important for Disney to start diving into actual histories, not fictitious, to let young boys know that, hey, we have real kings. We have Malcolm. We have Marcus Garvey. We have Martin Luther King. We have, um, you know, we're seeing um, Barack Obama. Uh, yeah, you know, Fred, Ham Fred, you know, the Fred Hamptons. We're seeing young kings, but then what they don't want to tell you is what happened to our kings. Is the is the caveat of why those kings never lived to see such an old age and live? Why do black boys and those kings never live happily ever after? And I think that's the niche of why you don't see that on screen because. For us, there's really not a lot of happily ever after in this in this uh, in this system. So that but that's what we're trying to create and work towards every day. Yeah. Wow. That's deep. Gotcha. That level. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay. So I mean, we had our last question, and so I'll pose it to Nikki first. If you want to, if anyone was watching this interview, particularly I would say the next generation, what would you want them to take away? Um, from it, from your perspective, from just representation in general, Marvel, Disney? We can be wherever we want to be. And sometimes we have a seat at the table, sometimes we bring our own chair. But I think if we continue to wait for others to make room for us, uh, we will always be behind the eight ball. I believe we are an empowered people who can do it for ourselves. So our Ryan Coogler's that are out there making these movies and directing these movies, producing these movies, we can chart our own path. We don't have to wait for someone to make room for us. Um, I feel like if they're making room for us, that's great. We want to be there as well, but we don't have to isolate ourselves to just that in this waiting game of waiting for them to come around and realize how important we are to the scene. Um, I also would like to emphasize that all stories don't have to come from tragedy. Um, when, when I look at Disney's movies now, at least the ones from when I was showing my nieces when they were children, you know, I went back and I thought that every single one of them started from a horrible death of a parent or, or some tragedy that was just 
befall befalls this character and it's just like oh my god that doesn't always have to be real life um i would love for mm-hmm. to actually do movies where they keep the family as a unit and they are not destroyed by grief and devastation before a hero can emerge or a heroine can emerge um so i would say going forward i'd want people to know we can make our own spaces if we don't want to wait we can make our own if we get our space provided to us that's great get in there and do what we do show out take over make sure that you leave your mark because whatever you do is going to be there forever and there will be people decades centuries from now talking about this same topic in a different manner then and know that your piece that you contribute is going to be the deciding factor whether it makes a positive or negative impact in our people in our community hmm. thanks nikki cj well, I would have to I would have to echo those sentiments, and you know, it's in like uh, the whole seat at the table, uh, you, you know, what you said so eloquent. I would tell anybody who's watching this, whether it's a young audience or somebody, if if Disney is not doing it, if and Marvel is not doing it, then you can do it your own. I have a sister yeah. that decided, hey, my my niece has ADHD, so she just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna write a book, and she just did it, and she just put and it was, it was uh, and posted on and it was on and it's on Amazon right now, so. You well, anything that you can do, if, if you don't see yourself, then you be that, right? Yep. You decide that you can be, you can be the first, and you have a when you decide to in your mind to be the first, you have a you have a responsibility to those who come who come after you, so that you are opening doors and not just building walls. Because I mean, for far too long, whether it's in Hollywood or in any profession. We see too much of that. We see too much when someone who is a minority or someone who has our same pigmentation, they get the opportunity and we have that crab in the barrel mentality where it's like, I'm here, let me make sure that nobody else can come in because it's going to take away from my opportunities. Um, So we wanna make sure that we're also, when we get opportunities, we're opening those doors as well. And I will say, if you don't see Disney princesses and you don't see our kings that's on the screen as well, it's because they're also in history books. Right. So our history didn't start in the civil rights movement. So go go find your Disney princess, I mean, your princess in, in, in Egypt and go find your, your princess or your king in, uh, in Africa and start going diving deeper into the history of our people. And then out of those out of your knowledge of self, then you can then share that knowledge and that light with the world. And so that's what I would want anybody to take from this conversation. How amazing that would be. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If they would actually. Yeah into the depths of the history of people and actually find those characters in our real history. Mm-hmm. America, the whole world needs to know those stories. Someone mm-hmm. needs to write those stories. Someone needs to go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. So if it isn't Marvel or Disney, by golly, whoever it is, maybe your son, my son, mm-hmm. someone's son, someone's grandson, whomever it is, let's just get out there and do the darn thing. Right. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, TJ, where can people find you, your podcast? Where can they? Uh, yes. Um, so on, on Twitter, it's Legacy Cold World. <laughs> and on Instagram, Legacy Legacy Cold World. All one, all one word. And then Soapbox Podcast on all major platforms and streaming services, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud. Um, yeah. And if you have, if you want to get in contact with us, it's Soapbox Podcast at gmail.com and we're on facebook and youtube live every weekly at 8 p.m with my co-host alan york uh giovanni hampton and jesse we're our four black uh freelance journalists talking social political news it's kind of like it's wilding out merce meets cnn so it's a new take on <laughs> it's a new take on how you can digest uh the information but we talk everything from relationships to to the news to you know, finance, the mental health, domestic violence awareness, and also uh, mental health awareness as well. So we'd love for you to subscribe, join us. And again, Holly, thank you so much. And uh, the good doctor, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And thank you so much for inviting me on, on yes. the show. Yes, and Nikki, um, thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah, Nikki, well, I know you're on Facebook, but any other social media? <laughs> I, I, have I have them all, but I don't have a podcast or anything like that. I like to say I'm just a teacher. <laughs> um, I'm an administrator, and you know, so I, I try not to be uh, too much on social media. 
with a lot of things just gotcha. because of my leadership mm-hmm. position. However, I am an avid follower of such. And so I will definitely be jumping on to the Soapbox podcast. So you'll see my little likes and hearts everywhere. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. And I, I share <laughs> as well. So as well as um, please understand, yes. you know, I stay stalking that page. So <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, and Nikki's been on a couple, I've been on other episodes too. But no, I thank you both for coming on. And like I said, I'll drop links below so you guys can reach out to these people. Um, those also, um, the Soapbox podcast is going to be a featured channel on my channel, so you can see that with other guest yeah. channels that have been there. So thank you for watching, and until next time, bye. Bye. <laughs>